We're off on an African adventure unlike any other. Join me, Forrest Sawyer, as President John Kufour takes me on a tour of his breathtaking Republic of Ghana. In the next hour, the president flies me to an elaborate festival, takes me high into the treetops, and out on safari. Steady there, big fella. Why'd you do that? Shows me he's still got game. Whisks me to a chocoholics fantasy spot and reveals how our two nations are forever entwined. It's Ghana, the presidential tour, coming up next. Just below the bulge in Africa's western coast is the Republic of Ghana, a 92,000 square mile nation about the size of Oregon. Ghana's seaside capital, Accra, is a blend of old and new. The brisk urban pace of this city of two million is tempered by near equatorial heat. I've been invited on an exciting adventure by the president of Ghana. But first, I must meet the man himself. That means a trip to the magnificent Osu Castle. President John Kufour works behind these whitewashed walls, and he's brought his color guard out to greet me. Mr. President, how good to see you. Welcome to Ghana. Thank you for letting me come to visit your country. We are very happy you are here. Wonderful. Well, we have a lot to see. Indeed. Let's wander around a little bit. All right. Mm -hmm. well, welcome. And where are we exactly? Here? We are in this ancient castle, about 300 years old. Uh, the British converted this place to the seat of government about 110 years ago, and it has remained so since then. So this is truly a fortress. A fortress. For centuries, fortresses were used to rule Ghana, as a series of European nations vied for control of the region's wealth of natural resources. Climax to her tour of Ghana, Queen Elizabeth visits the Tamale area of the country to be feted by various tribal chiefs. None of the tensions that When John Kufour was a boy, Ghana was controlled by the British, who took over in 1902. He saw his nation become the first African colony to gain independence, led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1957. Blessed with family wealth and an Oxford education, young John Kufour felt a calling. Man can be moved by a sense of mission. And way back, even from perhaps as early as my secondary school days, I had felt that I had some duty or some role to play in the evolution of my country. So when I had the opportunity to go to parliament and be appointed as the deputy foreign minister of Ghana at the age of 30, I thought my destiny was rolling on. In the year 2000, John Kufour became Ghana's president. Recently re-elected, the goal for his second term is nothing short of a Ghanaian renaissance. Getting out of any chaos or confusion is never easy anywhere. But Ghana somehow is seen as such by the international community now, and everybody is encouraging us. We want to make Ghana a very safe and comfortable niche within the village, global village. Ghana already has a high literacy rate. Children learn English at school and speak their native tongues at home. Yet many Americans are unaware of Ghana's political and economic stability. You know there are people who are a little nervous about visiting West Africa. 
I say it's natural for people to be nervous when they keep on reading about coup here, coup there. But we are talking of Ghana now. I would say Ghana is as safe as any place on earth. You mean if I walk at 2 a.m. to the streets of Accra with a $100 bill in my teeth, I'll be all right? More likely, you would meet somebody who might offer help to you and would also remind you that that's the hundred dollar you've got between your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the it's proper place is in your pocket. President Kufour has some pressing affairs of state, so he's sending me ahead to start a special tour of his favorite spots in Ghana. This is only the beginning. You see some history, some culture, uh, some tourist attractions. I hope you enjoy it. We will. When we know it, we'll know Ghana. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> President Kufour sends me northwest to the Ashanti stronghold of Kumasi, where I'm greeted by a prominent member of his cabinet. Well, my, I'm Jacob Betchubi Lamson, the Minister for Tourism. The President has asked me to be your guide. Let's go. Perfect. Our destination is Manhia Palace, where a panoply of parasols announces that a spectacular festival is about to begin. chiefs are arriving to pledge allegiance to the Ashanti king, Otumfuo Ose Tutu II, and his royal court. In a quieter corner of the palace, I meet a son of the former king, who will guide us through this ceremony. Tell me about the festival. This is what we call the Akwesidae Festival according to the traditional African religion. At the end of every month, you must propitiate your ancestors. It's to let the ancestors know that we are alive, we are following the precepts, the traditions, and our culture as they handed over to us. You're telling the ancestors that you are continuing all the things that they have handed down. Because you see, in Africa, our culture is being buffeted by Western ideas and Western culture. A group of people without a culture, without any identity, is lost. See, that's why we celebrate this Akwesidae festival every 40 days. The gold the king wears is really remarkable. Of course, gold is the king of metals. So anyone who wears gold exacts respect will use gold as a symbol of authority. As treasured as the gold is the colorful kente cloth worn by royalty here. I collect rare textiles and ask to see how kente is made. The nearby village of Bonre is the center of kente weaving. Enter almost any home, and you'll find treasures being crafted with a level of skill that comes from having trained since childhood. If you are born here, you must know how to make kente cloth. Like from six years to maybe ten years, you're, you're supposed to know how to make kente cloth. Now he's making double weave. We have three different kinds of weave. We have double weave, we have single weave, and we have triple weave. You have a triple weave? Yeah, we have triple weave. This is triple weave. Yeah. Oh, I can feel it. Yeah. It's different. It can take for about two weeks. It takes two weeks, two weeks. just to make oh, this one. Yeah, just like this. Once, all these colors were natural, dyed with plants found in the forest. Like the vivid hues in this antique triple weave kente, that I'm taught to wear a shanty style. Is this the right way? That's correct. It's the right way? Yes. yes. Now you are properly attired to meet the chief. <laughs> <laughs>
when we come back. President Kufour gives me an extreme tour of the rainforest treetops. And I have more fun with a barrel full of monkeys. This morning, the president of Ghana, John Kufour, has asked his Air Force pilots to take me south toward a destination near Ghana's coast. Here I see a pocket of pristine rainforest with a white line threading through the treetops. It's the world's longest rainforest canopy walkway. President Kufour's massive motorcade rushes through the forest for a rendezvous. That's a lot of police. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Yeah, how did you sleep? Very well. Tell me a little about where we are. I'm within the Kakum National Park. I hope I'm going to have an experience. Let's have a hike. At age 67, this energetic leader sets a blistering pace up the steep path to the treetops. <laughs> how are we doing for uh, poisonous snakes in this area? Um, there are quite a few, but they are not around here. Finally, we reach a hut, perched over a rainforest ravine, the start of our canopy tour. So here we are, right in the very canopy of the rainforest. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This is a rare thing. Yes, it is. Well, gentlemen, what do you think? Shall we, uh, shall we give it a go here? Yes. Let's try it. All right, here we are. Ideally, there should be as few people on the bridge as possible, since it's narrow, wobbling, and several stories above the ground. President Kufour, who I learned is not fond of heights, gamely tries it for the first time. You're welcome Hi. to Platform 1 in the Kakum Forest. And everything's different up here than it is on the ground. Exactly. The forest is in layers. At the moment, we are above the canopy layer. If you look down now, you will not see the floor of the forest. So we have some animal species that will live solely within this closed canopy. And if this closed canopy disappears, those animal species too will disappear. These include the monkeys. You made it. Welcome to the first platform. Thank you very much. <laughs> home sweet home. We have seven bridges, and they go in a semicircle. Together, that's 350 meters of walkway. Almost a thousand feet. President, this is your first time here. Uh, the first time. What do you think? I didn't believe we, we had such property here. I'm enchanted. Back at the trailhead, the music of insects is replaced by bamboo. I'm told this dance is being used to increase environmental awareness among the locals, a way of asking them not to participate in illegal logging at Kakum. How did you like Kaku? This is fantastic. I've never had an experience like that. Walking across that bridge was an experience for both of us, wasn't it? Uh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so let's go. I'm going to send you off to the best place in the country where you see humans and monkeys relate so well. 